Hi and welcome to my channel. This is going to be one of my very first videos and I am going to start with these new molds that I just got off of Amazon. I've bought a couple of things from this company before but I've never had a all-in-one silicone mold for these little miniature keychain uh, things. So anyway, so here we go. It's got nine cavities for all the different shapes sizes and types of tumblers. Got the wine glass, mason jar, coffee cup, the skinnies, the slims, and then the traditionals there. Super cute, especially for those who make a little bit of everything and want to do this uh, for a little add-on for their customers. Uh, so anyways, we are going to do a couple of them. I don't really need to do all of them right now. I'm, I'm most interested in this one and this one. The mason jar mold I have right now is really, really deep and kind of obnoxious. And then the wine glass mold I have is really big and kind of cumbersome. So it's kind of a not cute keychain. So this particular kit off of Amazon comes with a few of these little keychains. Uh, I see the little jump rings in there. And then um, we just loop it through there when it's done. This one also comes with a whole bunch of little water slides. So we'll see how that turns out. We may or may not use this. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and mix up some epoxy and I'll be right back. So I'm just about done mixing up my epoxy. I went ahead and did 30 milliliters because I'm not sure yet. I should have measured, but I didn't. I'm not sure yet what my capacity is on each of those. So you can kind of see the little swirls here and there, kind of oily looking. Got to make sure and get those off. Uh, that is probably, I'm not a scientist and I am not an epoxy expert, but that's probably why sometimes we get those random sticky spots. Um, I got these little stir sticks in another kit um, a while back. They're kind of icky now, but I stir it up really good and then I just take a clean spot of a paper towel and wipe that off and then I use the flat part to scrape the sides and continue stirring. Um, for the colors for these, I'm going to just use the same color because I don't really have a end user in mind. I'm just kind of prepping for a craft show and I got a really great new glitter on um, Friday from my favorite glitter seller. I have a few that aren't from her, but almost all of my glitters come from Franz Glitter and More. She's so sweet. Um, great customer service. It's so fast. Um, she's got family that helps her fill her orders and a little bit of a cult following because she's just so easy to work with and always adding new stuff and always listening to her customers. So if you need a new glitter supplier, there are a lot of really good ones out there. I just personally kind of latched on to her. That was my first real glitter purchase outside of Michael's Hobby Lobby, Joann's and the like. I actually ended up selling all of my craft store glitter on Facebook Marketplace uh, whenever I kind of got a pretty decent selection of colors from her. So anyways, I've got all of the uh, slick spots looking, uh, slick looking spots kind of stirred in, maybe just one or two more. I'm not worried about air bubbles on this because I'm about to pour something in there and I'm sure it'll just make more air bubbles. But I just got this really great red, white, and blue called Merica uh, from Franz. I love it. I've been thinking about getting it for a while and I finally just did it. So I like to pour a nice little chunk in there. Sometimes I kind of shoot myself in the foot by filling this too full, doing the 30 mLs. Maybe someday I'll buy some deeper medicine cups, but probably not because these are so stinking cheap, especially when um, that company does free shipping on no minimum purchase. I think they offer free shipping on minimum purchases fairly often, but um, this is um, kind of nice whenever you can get 
no minimums. But anyway, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more because I feel like that was a little slim. And voila. Sometimes I let this kind of sit for a bit, especially in the summertime when it's like really, really hot and the epoxy is really runny. It's like in the 60s right now. My shed isn't super hot, so I'm not going to be too concerned with um, how much it's going to settle, especially since this is just kind of a play pour um, for now. Anyway, so I'm going to do these two, possibly this one. I'm really the most interested in this one, but I really like that little cup too. Uh, it's a little bit bigger version of one I've been using, so it's kind of cute um, difference there. I've got a ton of these for a craft show, so I may have to crank out a bunch of those and see what the feedback is. I may end up getting a second one of these molds so I can do multiples at a time. So anyways... I like to just kind of start in the middle and let it spread out and go from there. I feel like if I have to tilt it too much, that's what makes that weird lip around the edge of it. But if I get it pretty full and get it pretty um, even, I don't feel like I have too much that I have to either exacto or sand. The trouble with doing that is you end up with kind of a hazy edge that you either need to epoxy over or spray it with a clear coat or something like that. Um, I wasn't paying attention, so I kind of got a drip down the side there. So anyways, I just fill it pretty much to the top unless they're ridiculously deep cavities, but these aren't. These are reasonably deep. Sorry for the jump in the video clip. My phone rang and I couldn't do anything about it. So anyways, I'm going to finish filling this up. And I'm pretty certain that I have enough for the wine glass as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that also. So this particular glitter combo is just a whole bunch of red, white, and blue. Most of her chunky mixes have three sizes in them. Um which kind of helps fill in the gaps when you're doing like a, a tumbler that has the chunky on the bottom. It fills in the gaps in case you're not the kind of crafter that does the fine all the way down. But anyways, I'm just gonna scrape the edges here and get as much out of there as possible. I'm not too worried about any tiny little pieces on the side. So that was 30 milliliters and it pretty much filled all three cavities, which is pretty good. Again, I could have measured that ahead of time, but I did not. This is my first video, so I'm gonna learn as I go. So I'm not gonna pick this up, but this one is full. This one is full. This one is close enough to full that I think it'll be fine. I don't think I'll have a whole lot of um, scraping to do or anything, especially since it hasn't been like maneuvered that way. You know, when it gets really thick, you have to maneuver it kind of funny. So anyways, the, um, the end result color is going to be really pretty. Um, I have one somewhere. This is a keychain I did yesterday. It's not quite cured. It's still a little bit soft since it's so thick. But who doesn't love red, white, and blue together? It's just so good. I mean, so many states, not just America, for countries. Just a good combo. Has a good representation. So I like to use it, and I'm really glad that I finally bought this color combo. Because I like it a lot, and I see a lot of this in my future. Um, I tend to gravitate towards a certain handful of chunky mixes just because of the um, color combos. I'm a creature of habit. So I will pause the video and I'll demold these in the morning sometime so the lighting will be a little bit different but I'll show you what it looks like whenever we're done. 
Um, I almost forgot to mention that to get the air bubbles out of here, you'll kind of see them rising up after the glitter settles a little bit. Completely forgot to hold off for that part. To get those off, I use the flat part of this. This is kind of the one that hasn't been cleaned off as much. Um, it just is so hard to get them clean sometimes. I like to take the little, the flat part. I feel like it picks the bubbles up. I usually will pour it, like scrape it against the side of a medicine cup that I had just used, but I'm actually building my next Lego man. So this one is, since it's stacked the way it is, it really doesn't matter that that's full of air bubbles. Um, it's not for anything you're not really worried about it breaking on anybody because it's just a silly little thing that my daughter asked me to do and I um, got this mold off of Amazon it was like four bucks or something no I got this one off of eBay my bad um sometimes there's not air bubbles but you can see some of the glitter kind of floating on the top and now that this has thickened up you can kind of stir it in just a little bit better, but sometimes that will actually create air bubbles even if you didn't have them before. Um, so that is easier managed kind of several minutes into it. These have probably been sitting here five minutes while I was getting set up to use my turner for a video. Uh, but like I said, I normally will scrape this into the side of a medicine cup, but I didn't want to do that on these because um, I already threw it, I wrapped it in my glove and threw it away. So uh, anyways, just wanted to add that little tidbit and I will unmold these in the morning. Okay, so these have been here at least 12 hours. Really, I think according to the manufacturer stuff, you're supposed to let it sit for a couple of days, but I'm impatient. So that's why I have gloves on because this epoxy is not cured yet. Um, I apologize, I've been sneezing all morning and I've only been awake for a few minutes, so uh, my voice sounds weird. So I'm just going to kind of gently pull the edges away here and then kind of just roll that out of there. Careful not to pull that too hard. I have had a silicone mold that I was a little rough with it thinking, oh, silicone's tough and it totally ruined. So there is this. It's got a nice clean edge because it was pretty full. Um, I love this glitter so much. So anyways, I'm gonna put the ring on it in just a minute. And I didn't have too much settling. You can kind of see that the glitter, there's a little bit that floated on top right there, but for the most part, it's it's pretty throughout. There's I've had some before. You can kind of see it right there with the layering. Uh, you can see it kind of clear. Um, I've had some before that it was so hot and I poured it right away and the um, glitter settled straight down. So just kind of pull that away again. I'm going to try it from this direction this time. No, nope, let's go the other way. I also keep this little embossing tool handy because I really don't want to ruin my molds. I've got about 15 molds, uh, all different shapes and stuff, and I really don't want to ruin another one. So I started using that recently. Uh, so anyways, here is this one. Pretty decently clean edge. It's not cured, so I just bent it. I'm going to have to lay it on a flat surface. And the last one, we've got our little wine glass. This one, I'm expecting it to have a little lip on it because it wasn't quite full. But if this was fully cured, that would probably pop right out uh, pretty easily. Uh, it doesn't actually have as much, I bent it again. Um, it doesn't have as much of a weird little lip as I thought, really just right here. Since it's not cured, I'm just going to push it down. I know not all molds would work that way, but now I don't have that weird little cat ear looking corner there. I've got a 
has this mold here that I did the other day. You can kind of see that super sharp corner right there. I've actually kind of already pressed these down as well, but just makes it where you don't have to use your X-Acto knife and kind of shave that off of there. So that's that. Those are out of the molds. Those look good. Since I've got a good place to hang them, I'm going to go ahead and put the rings on and hang them. I have a little thread holder that I use for that kind of stuff since I sew also. So this kit came with a few of these uh, keychain key ring combos. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold it steady with my pliers here. I'm just going to work that right in there. And just kind of bring them together. Oh, I got off camera. I'm sorry. I'll make sure and do better on the next one. So anyways, just kind of pull that around. Voila. That one's done. Since I used a really dark glitter on this, I'm not going to use the water slides that came with it. Maybe if I do a lighter glitter um, on the next batch, I will. So just kind of loop that on there. Loop that through there. Oh, I may have made this one too thick. That's all right. I have a better, I have a jump ring that has a better fit for the bigger, thicker stuff. So we'll throw this on this guy. <laughs> I made them too thick. Oh no. That's okay. I have uh, jump rings. these and these are just from Hobby Lobby and I have a few of these I think it's like 9 and 12 or something since this is pretty much the same size I'm going to swap over to the big one and I try not to get the teeth marks in there so I use the flat part of my pliers right there you can see it doesn't have any teeth there we go right there so I try and use that to hold one spot sometimes it still leaves a spot but not nearly as bad and then I bought these the other day that don't have any teeth these are actually for jewelry the other ones probably came in like a Harbor Freight kit or something so I'm gonna loop that on the end there loop that in there close it back up if you were to use that and make it not quite as thick, you wouldn't have to substitute that. But again, I like mine kind of on the beefier side. And I'm going to do the same thing for the coffee cup. Just opening that up just, just enough to really accommodate for this thickness. That's really all there is. I'm going to do that. that bring that together yeah so we're good there so I might add a little tassel on there in a little bit I've got some cute little tassels that I got off Amazon a while back uh, for my other keychains but overall these are super cute and if you are really wanting to make something that kind of matches your um, customer's order it's perfect because you've got pretty much all the shapes you know these are the three I just did you've got your 20 and 30 ounce skinnies um, the regular slims and then the the curve some people call it modern curve I don't know that may be too sharp of an angle to call it the modern curve uh, but Anyways, overall, I like it. It's not super duper thick. It's not super scrawny. So I'll definitely be doing the other molds to match my other orders. So have a good day. If you have any questions, please drop them below. I'll do my best to be checking on it. Um, check out my other videos. I've already got another one posted, even though this was technically my first post or my first video. 
Um, I did go ahead and do another one where we recreated a smaller version of this cup. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff as well, go ahead and take a look at it and um, subscribe. I'm new. I could use the support. So anyways, have a good one. And I'll post the link to everything that I used uh, in just a little bit after I post the video. So have a good one.